Hello friends, welcome to my channel Creating Essence. I am Megan and I'm so glad that you've stopped by today. Today I'm going to share with you one of my favorite money saving recipes. I used it long before I had a large family but now that I have a large family it is even more valuable to me. We don't drink much milk but we do like yogurt and I prefer to get the whole milk yogurt that is still full of all the nutrients and that can be really expensive. A lot of times that's upwards of seven to eight dollars a quart and my family needs now one sometimes two quarts for a full breakfast. So I save a lot of money by making it myself and you don't need anything fancy. Here is the recipe for you. All you'll need is a crock pot. I use my extra large one, which fits about one and a half gallons of milk. A whisk or a rubber spatula. A thermometer, I like my digital one, makes it easy. And some yogurt. In order to get the culture growing, you need to add the culture. This is just one cup worth of yogurt, maybe a little more than that, from my last batch. The first thing I do every time I start a batch is dip out a container of yogurt for starting the next batch. If you're buying it from the store, just get a single serving of yogurt that is at least one cup worth, and it has to have the five live active cultures listed. That is absolutely key. The first step is to pour your milk in the crock pot. You can use a smaller one or you can use one that's even bigger than mine. You want to fill it until it's almost to the top but not quite full. This is about right. It will expand and rise just a smidge more plus you're going to be adding your starter. Your next step is to cover it, plug in your crock pot, and turn it on low. You can turn it on high if you want to heat the milk a little faster, but you have to be very careful to watch it and make sure it doesn't scald. I put it on low, and the goal is to get the temperature of the milk up to 180 degrees, which will kill all of the bad bacteria in the milk. So we let this go on low for a few hours. That's going to depend upon your crock pot. It's been about three hours, so I'm going to take the lid off and take the temperature. So not quite 180. Again. Not quite. All right, let's check the temperature again. Give it a little stir. All right, we're good. So now we will shut the heat off, take the lid off and let it cool until it hits 115 degrees. It's been about two hours, so we will test the temperature, see if it has cooled sufficiently. Right about 115, that's exactly what we want. So the next step is to dip out roughly two cups of the warm milk. And 115 is the temperature we aim for because we are going to introduce the good bacteria now. And at that temperature, it won't be killed. So we pour in that yogurt starter. Remove the yogurt saved from the last batch. You can start it from a cup of yogurt from the store as long as it has those five live active cultures. I'm just whisking this a little bit because otherwise it will stay a little separated. I want it to mix in to sort of temper it. And then we 
pour that in here. Stir this to incorporate it all just a little. It's getting a little full and flow it over there. That's why we don't want to fill it to the tippy top. And now I'm going to put the lid back on. Turn the heat up to high and set the timer for five minutes. Now that the timer's gone off, turn off the heating element and I unplug it just to be extra sure. Carefully slide it because it'll spill. <laughs> Slide it to the back of the counter where it's out of the way. And then cover it with a towel. Now that five minutes was just enough to heat up the heating element, not enough to start cooking what's inside the crock pot. And the towel helps keep the heating element from cooling too quickly, it keeps the heat in from the glass top and the seam that goes around here, and it just makes the whole thing cool down very, very slowly so that the good bacteria in there have a chance to culture. If you're not able to leave this on your counter out of the way, back when I had a smaller kitchen, I would wrap it in, lay out a towel and flip it over and then put another one on top of it, and then I'd tuck it in a corner like on the floor or something somewhere I was sure that the children would not get to it but we leave this overnight or for at least 8 to 12 hours to culture all right it's been about 10 hours so I'm going to put the towel off and you can see it is firm there's whey on the top it is nicely cultured what are you doing you stinker. I see. May I please have my phone? May I have it? No? Fine. So, it is nicely cultured, and you could just go from here. You could strain it through mesh, through um, a colander lined with cheesecloth to get Greek yogurt. What I like to do is put it in the refrigerator for about four or five hours and that really firms it up and firms up the solids so that all of this liquid here separates and I can just pour it off into the sink and it saves me all that work of the mesh strainer. And there we have it in my fridge and we will leave it here for, oh, it's 9.30 now. I'll probably get it out after lunch, which will be about one o'clock. It has been about five hours that this has been in the fridge. It is completely cold to touch all the way around. So it's time to strain off the liquid. Now this is technically whey. So if you do lacto-fermentation, this is a good thing to actually keep, but I have no use for it right now. So we just pour it into the sink or on the counter, you know, whatever. You can see it's kind of solid. It's sliding forward, but not quite spilling. And then I'll turn it to the other side because see how it makes pockets? It does create those throughout. So try to pour it in both directions, make sure any pockets are poured out. And now we will transfer it to containers here. I have a gallon pitcher, which makes it really super easy for pouring out. I also have a gallon glass jug I often use. And because we made a gallon and a half, it will make more than this gallon jug. So I have this half gallon jug for backup and some of these containers to show you some things that we do with our yogurt. So the first thing we're going to do is dip out some yogurt to be used for our starter next time. 
Next, I have some of these small containers here that we're going to do personal servings of yogurt. Taking my homemade blueberry jam from blueberries we picked ourselves. And we put about a tablespoon, eh, maybe a little less, of jam. So it's like fruit in the bottom. And then we put a scoop of yogurt on top. This is a great single serving size of yogurt that my husband can take to work with him. He'll just stir it up when he's ready. The kids also like to sweeten their yogurt with raw honey or maple syrup, but when we're doing fruit in the bottom, we use some homemade jam. And these will keep for up to two weeks in the refrigerator. Now you'll see that it is really wonderfully smooth, but there is some more liquid in there. So we didn't make it super duper dry, but if you want a super thick yogurt, you can still certainly strain that with cheesecloth lining a mesh colander. And that is it. It really is a simple, easy, really healthy and money saving process. It does take time, about 24 hours, but it's very little hands on time. Most of it does itself. I hope that was helpful to you. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever made crock pot yogurt before, or if you have a process similar to this, or if there's another way you like to make your own yogurt. Please share this for anyone you think might be useful and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Bye-bye, friends.